Hi and welcome to our introductory video to cardiomyopathy. So when we say cardiomyopathy, what does it mean? Let's break the term. The word cardio represents the heart, myo represents muscles, and pathy represents disease. So cardiomyopathy is a disease of the heart that makes it harder for the heart to pump blood to the rest of the body which usually leads to heart failure. In other words, we can say they are a group of diseases that affect specifically heart muscles. Now, these abnormal heart muscles, which are seen in cardiomyopathy, is not entirely caused by blocked arteries in the heart, such as coronary artery disease, hypertension, valvular heart disease, be it aortic or mitral valve, disease, tricuspid or pulmonary valve disease, or even congenital heart diseases. As such, they are primarily specific or primary abnormalities of the myocardium, most of which are inherited and mostly seen in children and young adults, though we may have adults who are affected as well. Now, there are three major types of cardiomyopathy. Basically, we have the dilated cardiomyopathy, the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, and restrictive cardiomyopathy. Now, since this is a general overview of uh, cardiomyopathy, I'm going to give just brief information to each of them. Then we shall look at their general risk factors as well as the general clinical manifestation. Then we shall look at generally the diagnostic investigations that we carry out for the three of them then we look at how to manage them you know as a group then in our subsequent videos we shall look at them in detail pick each of them and describe them in detail and so in dilated cardiomyopathy the main problem is there is over distension of the ventricles predominantly the left ventricle and so the myocardium is thinned out which leads to problem with contraction. This is the main problem we find in dilated cardiomyopathy. In hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, uh, there is hypertrophy, as the name implies. There is hypertrophy of the left ventricle. And most often, the septum is also affected. The septum also gets hypertrophied. And so, the cavity of the ventricle is reduced. And there is also obstruction of the left ventricular outflow and so blood leaving the left ventricle to the rest of uh, the system is you know reduced then in restrictive cardiomyopathy what we find is that as the name also implies there is some form of restriction on the heart muscles and so the myocardium has become very stiff due to the position of certain substances in its muscles and this causes fibrosis of the muscles and so they lose their elasticity and eventually the muscles can't relax to receive blood and so the amount of blood which leaves the you know ventricles into circulation is also reduced so these are the main types of cardiomyopathy that we shall you know talk about and as I said, we shall pick them one by one and explain in detail. But before that, some identifiable risk factors of cardiomyopathy that we know include the family history of cardiomyopathy and also heart failure as well as sudden cardiac arrest. We also find it in long-term hypertension as well as uh, some coronary artery diseases or infections of uh, the heart. Then also people who have used alcohol for a very long time and also drug abusers. We also find it in conditions such as the use of chemotherapy and radiation therapy in the management of cancer. Then we also see it in some endocrine and hematologic disorders. So these are some risk factors which may predispose an individual to getting cardiomyopathy, any of these things. Now, which symptoms relate to all these three cardiomyopathies? 
basically all of these cardiomyopathies, be it dilated cardiomyopathy, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, or restrictive cardiomyopathy, all of them show signs of heart failure. And these signs of uh, heart failure may include the shortness of breath, as well as, you know, and this shortness of breath is usually on exertion. Also fatigue, weakness, uh, edema of the legs and ankles, as well as, you know, sometimes they may also have uh, arrhythmias and murmurs. They may also complain of, you know, palpitations as well as dyspnea. So these are basic general signs uh, and symptoms of these three types of cardiomyopathy. Now, uh, there are also some specific chest x-ray uh, signs of heart failure, which I want to draw your attention over here. And so, on the chest x-ray, we find that we have alveolar edema, which appears on the x-ray as a bat wing appearance. We also have the Kelly B lines, which signifies interstitial edema. Then cardiomegaly, which is enlargement of the heart. Then we also have diversion. Diversion here means that the vessels in the lungs divert to the upper parts of the lungs. And so the vessels become so prominent in the upper lobes of the lungs. Then we also have pleural effusion. So these are the basic chest x-ray signs of heart failure that we may also find in patients with cardiomyopathy. And so I have it in uh, the mnemonic A, B, C, D, E, so that you don't forget. Now, after seeing uh, the general signs and symptoms of cardiomyopathy, let's move on and look at the way we diagnose cardiomyopathy in general. So generally, we use or we implore the help of cardio or echocardiography in the diagnosis of cardiomyopathy. And echocardiography is uh, the first best diagnostic tool that we use in diagnosing cardiomyopathy. And this echocardiography will give us information or will show uh, things such as reduced ejection fraction in some of the cardiomyopathies. We may also uh, find wall motion abnormalities as well as dilatation and hypertrophy of the heart muscles. We may also use what we call the speckle tracking. Now, speckle tracking gives us much information as compared to the echocardiography. Now, as we may know, or as I'm going to tell you now, the overall information that we get from echocardiography is about the ejection fraction. And this is limited to changes in the ventricular cavity size during the cardiac cycle. But we also know that the occurrences of myocardial diseases can precede the structural myocardial changes, which are always shown by the traditional imaging techniques. And so we implore the help of speckle tracking, echocardiography, which measures myocardial strain in the longitudinal circumferential as well as the radial directions to identify structural ventricular deformities and some subtle changes which are often not seen in the imaging methods uh, that we use uh, in diagnosing echocardiography. And so the speckle tracking helps us to identify these subtle changes in the early you know, phase of the myocardial diseases. Other methods which we use in diagnosing cardiomyopathy may include the chest x-ray. And the chest x-ray, as I've alluded to earlier on, will show us signs of heart failure. And so don't forget this. You have the A, B, C, D, E as the x-ray signs of heart failure. Then we can also use the ECG. Now, the ECG will also show us signs of arrhythmias as well as some conduction abnormalities such as the atrial fibrillation, the bundle uh, branch block, and, and so on. So all of this will help us, will give us some information about what exactly is happening inside the heart. Then we can also use the MRI to give us some more information, as well as we can implore the help of biopsy and blood analysis. We use biopsy in some specific forms of the cardiomyopathy. For example, uh, biopsy 
is the gold standard test when we are diagnosing restrictive cardiomyopathy. Because when we do the biopsy, it helps us to identify the substances which have been deposited inside the myocardium. We can also do blood analysis. And with the blood analysis, basically what we look for are some blood markers such as the troponin and the CKMB as well as the B-type nitriuretic, nitriuretic peptide, which helps us to rule out other possible causes of myocardial damage, uh, such as uh, myocardial infarction. So these are the general diagnostic investigations that we undertake when we are diagnosing cardiomyopathy. Now, how do we manage cardiomyopathy in general? Generally, uh, since we saw that most of them are inherited, it is advisable that we go for genetic counseling. Then we have to treat heart failure. And the treatment of heart failure over here, I have the mnemonic AABD. The first A stands for AC inhibitors, the second A for ARBs, then we have the beta blockers as well as the diuretics. So this is how we treat heart failure. Then we also have to abstain from uh, alcohol since we said alcohol uh, can also, chronic use of alcohol can also cause uh, cardiomyopathy. Then we must treat infections and correct all endocrine uh, disorders. Then uh, after this, uh, we also uh, have to avoid certain substances which are toxic to the heart muscles, such as cocaine. So this is the general overview of cardiomyopathy as I have for you. Thank you very much for your attention.